we can flip the script by saying yes and how I can make that happen rather than in a few years to say oh, yes, but if I have tried it, it would be so much better. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So if you're new to this channel, in this channel I share a lot of things, but nowadays I just focus on how to capture the best memories in life and share on my journey what tips and tricks I have fun to do that and also talk to people uh, who has created a portfolio life and that will be helpful for you too. So today's video is really from a poll that I recently uh, started on my channel. I asked people what kind of videos they want to watch and it turns out people particularly interested in this topic called don't wait till 85. How not to be regretful in life. Well, I guess we all want to live the best life. So in this video, I'm just going to share a few tips and some observations and thoughts that I have on this topic. So recently I went to a trip in Barcelona and one of the keynote speakers is very famous. He has been in financial industry for a long time. One of his talking points is when you turn 85, you wouldn't really remember all of those deals that you've made. So you really emphasize the fact that all you remember is the experience you have, the relationship that you have with your close friends and family, and the impact you make today. So this is not the first time I've heard of this, I'm sure this is not the first time that you've heard of this as well. And how we can actually make it happen for us. We have heard the story of Jeff Bezos famously when he quit the e Shore, he has this chat with his boss and his boss was like, are you really sure that you are going to quit a stable and lucrative job in finance and sell books on the internet? And Jeff Bezos have this famously regret minimization framework. He will famously will imagine himself when he's 80 and he figured that he would not regret by trying instead. He would regret if he's not trying, and, but he wouldn't regret if it fails. So that's that. And also there's this famous Harvard study about how you actually build a life that you are happy. Uh, a lot of those are also focused on how you make the connections, how you make the best memories in life. There's one concept I really, really like from this book called Die With Zero is um, written by Bill P Perkins and he has introduced this concept called compound interest of memory. So we all know that in finance you have your compound interest of money. It means if you put one dollar today in the bank, it gets some interest today and then the interest compounds. So in two years, five years, ten years, you have more money. But it's the same thing that he said in our memory. If you create best memory earlier and you reframe your ideas and experience, actually it also creates compound interest. But that's on the memory because the earlier you have for those better memory, the, the better you remember it and then you will have or always can remember those good moments in life. So in today's video, I just want to share my tips on how to create compound interest of memory and we are going to focus on three points, experience, relationship and purpose. So first thing first is about experience. I have two rules for myself. One is say yes to life. Say yes to new experience and say yes to things that you haven't tried. Define the way that you want it. I always keep a new year resolution list or something that I will say, oh, this year, maybe at the end of the year, I'm going to Brazil. Um, then that will go on to my bucket list. I'm sure a lot of people also have their own bucket list. And in a broader sense, sometimes I think it's just easier to say yes to things that I allow myself to go a little bit further than my comfort zone, for example, making a new friend. In my video, you can see in my channel, I also try to be a little bit bold to ask uh, Ali or some other YouTubers to be on my channel to, add, to say something with me. And those are the things I think once you have created that memory that actually lasts a long time. Just a very recent experience, I was in Lisbon these days so I talk to people, I sometimes have friends, uh, pick up friends in coffee shops and then this person, he invited me to their barbecue party after we talked and find out that we actually have a lot of common interests and background and work experience etc. And 
I was like, yeah, for sure. Let's go. Let's see how it's like in a house party in Portugal. I just went to their place the second day, and that actually gave me a great experience. I think a lot of people they will say, oh, but I don't know about them. I don't know whether I can fit in. I'm just by myself. What if they don't like me? But for me, I think it's more. I will go and see how it's like, and if we enjoy the whole experience, then it's a good thing. But if not, I at least have tried. So I think that is actually a great experience, and also have a lot of other examples. And I think if you want to share yours, please leave a comment down below as well. Say yes and but not say yes but is actually a concept from improv comedy, and it encourage you building on a concept but not shutting it down. So I think it's the same thing in life, and also a lot of things that you think of challenge and stuff. It's always better you can try it next time. Like just change one word. Cause I have a lot of conversations with my friends. Sometimes I would be like, oh, if you want to really move out, move to a different country, why don't you just try it? And then usually the first response they would be like, yes, but I have this and that job here. I have all of my friends here. It's kind of hard to build on that if you want a new experience. And after several years, I also have talked to friends when in the past, like or family members, they would be like, "Oh, in that year, it would have been nice if I had done something." I think if we can flip the script by saying yes and how I can make that happen, rather than in a few years to say yes, but if I have tried it, it would be so much better. That's on experience and. We naturally need relationships. On relationship, I always enjoy building new connections, and these days I feel like I'm better and better at this. I think it's a muscle that you can definitely train. I am never extrovert. I am growing up a very introvert person, but I think there's a point that I found my sweet spot of how to meet people. What is the best way? What is the、uh, most comfortable way for me to meet people? And it actually takes training. It takes me my first solo trip to Spain, being in banking, and really have to train that muscle of how to build a relationship, how to. Start a conversation. How to talk in English in a way that people don't find it, find me, and like an outsider. But I think there's a way that we can slowly grow our comfort zone a little bit bigger. For example, you can start by talking to the person next to you in the gym to just ask, "Oh, how do you use this equipment?" Or in a coffee shop, you can ask about. The Wi-Fi password, as simple as that. I think sometimes in the restaurant as well. Like if you're just discovering the menu, you can find out whether it's good or not. Some people sitting next to you, if their dish looks good, and sometimes I would do the same. And people will ask me, then it's also a good conversation opener. So that's how you build new relationships because we also need new connections if you're going to try to be outside of your comfort zone a little bit. The other thing is. Uh, nurture your existing relationship. Sometimes we're not very good at it. I I am guilty myself. It's like I always am traveling. I'm very far away from my family and my childhood friends were also all over the place. But I think it's a good thing that we can schedule our catch up with our friends the same way that we schedule our recurring business meetings. Just put it something on the calendar like every month. It might not always happen, but it's always good that you remind you. Oh, actually, I need to catch up with this person. We've known each other for ten, twenty years. I don't want to miss that relationship in my life. In one of my travels, I was in Greece, and then I met two guys. They're actually traveling together. They college friends, and they have a group of friends. Every single year, they will all go somewhere together. So I think those are the things we can at least put it on the agenda and try to make it happen because. At the end of the day, connection and relationships are very, very important for us. And finally, last but not the least, is purpose. It's kind of a difficult and big topic to talk about because everyone has their own definition of purpose. I felt like I have found my purpose just by sharing my life here on YouTube with you and just try to enjoy life a little bit more. And also on my、uh, startup journey, I'm trying to do something. In climate and sustainability, and do the things I know the best to create a little bit of impact. Whereas in your life, maybe it's still early in that journey. How to find what do you really resonate with, and what is really the purpose? It's sort of like a large concept, 
But I think a few things that we can do is always ask ourselves how do we feel after finishing some kind of activity because there will be some activities after you even if it's hard, you feel very energized. So maybe you can lean into that. And also always say yes to new things, say yes to new conversations, then you can discover more and more information about what you really like, what you really resonate with. Um, and then try it out a little bit. That's about it from today's video. I think really the yes is the theme of making compound interests of memory. Say yes to new ideas, say yes to new experiences, say yes to new connections, and always be curious be open to the world. That's about it, that's today's video. I hope even if you only take away from one small thing from this video, I hope that you can start saying yes to things. I hope that you can start saying yes and instead of yes but. Try to use that technique a little bit more and if you can share with us what has happened after you've done that continuously, let us know in the comments down below. Say yes to life. I'll see you next time.